Star Cinema and ABS-CBN. Also a special shout out to our friends at Mix and Mix Global. Um, thanks for having us today. Yay. Hi everyone. Sharp but sweet. Hi, Albert Cecilia Gordon. and Jeremiah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we know that it's Clark. like midnight. It's like midnight. Uh, there yes. in New York. Midnight in New York. Yes. I'm. Um. I teach, so I have a class at eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh no! Well, thank you for staying yeah. up for us. Well, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> and joining us also from New York, we have the director, Diane Paragas. Hi, Diane. Everybody. <laughs> so, I'm how also, are you? Are I'm you also feeling a little bit sleepy like, yet? I'm a little bit sleepy, <laughs> but I'm pumped. I'm pumped for this. Um, I had some, uh, some coffee. <laughs> I'm good. That's great. That should get you through this whole media conference, hopefully. And of course, we have the one and only the two-time Disney princess, our beloved, the voice of the Philippines coach. Um, she is, of course, a Tony Award winner herself. I could go on and on, but we only have about an hour. So please welcome Miss Leia Salonga. Hi, everybody. Hello to our friends from the media who are here today. Hi, Ai. Hi, everybody. I hope everyone's doing well. Come on, New Yorkers, stay up. We're, we only have an hour. We're trying. Chug that it's coffee. Been, Come on now. We can do this. It's been an eventful week in the U.S. Yes, it has been. Oh, that's true. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, yes, and we would love to know more. Sleep, but it's all right. It's worth it. <laughs> All right, now I know uh, our friends from the media have a lot of questions about Yellow Rose, so let's get right to it. The first one um, is an icon. <laughs> um, she is an institution when it comes to Philippine press and Philippine media. Manai Ethel Ramos, of Manai course. Ethel. Hi, Manai Ethel. Uh, I'd like to uh, no, ask this question from Leia. Hi, Tita Ethel. How are you? Fine, thank you. Uh, Leia. Yes, Tita. Uh, my first question. Why sh I, uh, she should runs. I watch this Ooh. movie? And uh, how were you able to, How were you convinced to do this movie? How were you uh, convinced to do this movie? Directed well, I was a director, okay. not from the Philippines, but from abroad. I'm very oh. young. Yes, very. Actually, I think Diane and I are around the same age, so we're not that yeah, young. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Yeah, we were born the same year. Um, yeah. How was I convinced? I mean, my manager in the U.S. sent me the script, and he he actually pushed really hard for me to do this. He said, "You have to do this film. You should do this film because it's just the right thing to do. It is very topical, um, and you you should you should do this." I mean, it didn't take that much convincing to do. And Diane and I had actually worked together. I think I recognized her when I met her at that sushi restaurant across the street from Circle in the Square. I looked at her face. I'm like, why do I know you? <laughs> and it turns out that the two of us had worked together. She had directed me for a, like a Discovery Channel documentary, something, something. And I, I can barely remember the experience now. Um, but it was really funny that we had worked on that and then we worked on Yellow Rose together. Um, and so that's pretty much what got me into it. I mean, the script was, was beautiful. It was, it was a character that is not so easy to like, um, which I think is something far more attractive than, you know, far more interesting for me to play after having played many ingenues and heroines in my career, it was interesting to tackle and to try something where the character isn't really, really well liked. So trying to gain some empathy from an audience would be a little more challenging, unlike Rose, who is who you know is the hero throughout the entire narrative of the film. Um, yeah, and, and, and I patterned this character after somebody that I didn't like. And it made for an interesting shoot for me, I guess. And trying to, me trying to gain empathy um, for that kind of a human being. Um, 
but yeah, recently I was reminded of why I didn't like this person. So it was, it was interesting to be revisited by all of this, all at the same time. Um, but yeah, I mean, what convinced me to do this? Um, it was the power of the script and the power of the story and the power of my manager's word saying, this is the right thing to do. You got to do it. So that's it. Uh, Leia, yes, Tita. if I watch this movie, yes, will Tita. I consider it as unforgettable as Sana Maulit Muli? Ay, Tita, different, different experience. Cannot compare the two. Um, although it does tackle immigration, both of them kind of do. But sure. um, Yellow Rose kasi, it really tackles the plight of undocumented immigrants and immigration policies that are not particularly friendly to undocumented immigrants. Um, as for Sana Maulit Muli, I mean, the, even though there were a lot of very still topical issues that were tackled in the film, the centerpiece of that movie really was the romance between Jerry and Agnes. Um, for Yellow Rose, it, even though there is some, there's a romantic aspect to it, it really, really focuses on um, the human component and the human, parang yung, parang yung kung ano mga, nang, mga nangyayari sa mga tao, mga nadadamay you know, no thanks to a particularly unfriendly immigration policy in the United States. So it's really what happens when there is a lack of compassion. And so we see, we see Rose's journey and in seeing her journey, we are also then connected to all other undocumented immigrants, especially Filipino undocumented immigrants in the US. Um, and so we get to see that. We don't always get to see what happens to folks going through that. Um, so hopefully, you know, the folks that watch the movie are able to open their hearts and be a little more empathetic towards people who are going through it. Wala kang leading man dito. Why? Wala pa. I mean, wala. I mean, my character's married. Uh, her husband is Caucasian and is somebody that does not really want to help Rose in her journey through this film. So you don't see me at all in any romantic sort of situation. Um, that's for Rose to go through. My, my days of that are done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm a supporting character and I just help to advance the protagonist's journey in this. So that's, that is my role in this. It's, it's about 15 minutes or so in the entire movie, but it's a pivotal 15 minutes, I would like to think. <laughs> and I had a lot of fun shooting it. Thank Any more questions, Mane Ethel? Thank you very much. Thanks, Tita. No more. Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Can, Thank you, Mane Ethel Ramos. Can I chime, in? Can can I chime in? Go ahead. Yes, you were raising your hand. Yeah, I was raising my hand. Um, <laughs> This is my this is my uh, pitch to you guys. Um, you know, one critic called our film uh, "A Star Is Born Without the Addiction," <laughs> and and uh, that was really a, a critic's quote. And and that's really that's really a big part of the story. And on on multiple levels, um, it's the journey of a young woman uh, pursuing her dream to be a country music singer. Um, but it's also the introduction of a star in the form of Eva Noblezada that I think we're all very excited for you guys to meet. Um, but it does follow that trajectory with this background of this very political issue. But in the end of the day, it's an artist's journey. And um, I, I really believe if you liked A Star Is Born, to see that with some Filipino faces is something that you can kind of relate to in the movie. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. That's an interesting quote. <laughs> okay, now let's go to another friend from the media from One News Philippines. We have Von Belenario. Hi, Hi Von. Hi, Hi, everyone. Hi, my questions are for Miss Leia. Hi, Miss Leia. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Miss Leia, um, a lot of theater fans are so excited for this project because we're going to see two Kims. In one <laughs> That's right. Film. 
So how does it feel to be working with a younger Kim? I mean, two icons in theater industry, two icons of Miss Saigon. How does it feel working with, with, with Kim? Or with, with Eva, rather? With Eva. Um, it was wonderful finally getting to work with her. And it, it was, I think it was a good thing that the first shoot, her first shooting day was with me. Her first and second shooting days were with me. And the two of us already know each other. So I guess there was a good level of comfort for the both of us going into this. It's not like she was a total stranger. I mean, I met her, she was about 17 years old and she was still doing Kim in the West End. Um, I headed over to London for the big 25th anniversary gala. Um, and that's where I met her. And then I saw her in Miss Saigon again in New York. And then I got to see her in Hades Town, and she blew me away, you know, on that stage. And she's gonna blow people away with this movie. It's she really registers well on film. Um, she wears her heart on her sleeve, and that's apparent just as a human being. That's just how she is. She feels things in a very, very deep way as a human um just being around her and just talking to her working with her um she, it's very transparent everything is everything registers on her face everything registers in how she moves and in how she speaks so it makes her a very natural actor and very it's she registers really strong on camera and she's luminescent she really glows on screen. And I think people are going to recognize her as a star. Um, so I, you know, I have been chomping at the bit for folks here in the Philippines to finally get to see this movie, but we're in the middle of this global pandemic and everybody's gotten quite creative in how they are releasing the movies that have been in the can for at least a year. Um, but I'm glad that Yellow Rose did get a theatrical run in the US. I'm glad that it's finally coming here and that there are platforms to make it available. Um, I'm glad that it's able to come home and I'm glad that audiences will be able to meet Eva this way. And I, I think she's really gonna bowl people over. I think, I think she's, you know, she's poised to be a major superstar. So I'm, you know, I think, I don't know if I told her this or if I was having a conversation with Diane about this. Um, we must have been drinking. I must have said something. And I said something to the effect of her life is going to change once this movie comes out. And, and I, I still believe that that is what's going to happen. I think I was sober enough to remember that part of the conversation. But yeah, um, yeah, her life is definitely going to change as if it hasn't already changed there has been so much that's gone on in her life um since that debut in the west end like a lot of things have happened in her life and i'm i'm so excited for people to finally get to see her yeah um miss leia yellow rose is a tribute to country music but aside from that it tackles about um immigration and deportation issues without being political as a vocal supporter of Joe, Joe Biden's presidency, I want to know your thoughts on the recent actions of Joe Biden on immigration issues and policies in the U.S. Um, well, that the previous administration's immigration policies um, have been touted as not particularly compassionate. Um, and, part, and some of that is portrayed in Yellow Rose. Um, you know, there are ice raids that are portrayed. Um, so with Joe Biden announcing that, you know, there will be, you know, that DACA I think is returning and that there will be a path to citizenship. Um, for me, I mean, as the words are wonderful and I'm happy for them, but we'll only really be convinced if those words are turned into action. So it's hard to comment. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that he said it, but until I see it happen, it's, I'm going to sit back and watch as things take place. Because um, words are great, and he's a wonderful guy, 
and I've met him and he's fun and he's funny and just a really decent, lovely human being. But of course there are other machinations in place over which he does not always have direct power. So we need to kind of watch and wait and see what happens and then be able to judge and judge fairly. Thank you. I think Thank Cecilia so was much, raising Cecilia. her hand yeah. as well. Okay. Anything yeah. to add? Anything sure. to add, Miss Cecilia? Yeah. Um, well, with the with just to add to what Leia was saying, um, the last real, oddly enough, the last real yes, immigration reform that was sent, that was actually put into place, was during Reagan's time. Anything after that has been a band aid solution. So even during like. So you can't say it's like a democratic thing, it's a Republican thing. I, I would say that, I would argue that it's a systematic thing. So what um, what, Bi what Joe Biden's administration is trying to do is a pathway to citizenship. Right now it's, it's, it's it looks like it's clear, like they're trying to set up for dreamers. Who, so people who are, who are brought here illegally um, before they were a certain age, but now, but the problem is there are people that were here came here legally and still, and that's the issue within the film, came here legally, and but there is no pathway to citizenship for them. So that's all of those systemic things that need to change also. And there have been Filipinos I know are like on the, have been like in the highest waiting list for citizenship that I know for sure. So it's, there's a lot going on. There's so much going on. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully it's a start. It's a yeah. start. It's a start. It's a new start and a new administration. So we'll see. Everyone's like in this we'll see mode. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Thanks, Cecilia. And Jeremiah, I think, has something to add as well. Um, okay. So Jeremiah. Yeah, hi. Um, I think bringing it back to the film, um, one of the things that we really wanted to show is that immigration um, and the challenges of, for immigration is a, a universal issue here in the U.S. It's, it's primarily have been portrayed um, directed toward a particular group of people in our country. But um, I mean, there are undocumented Filipinos, there are undocumented um, various different cultures here in the US. And I think that's, that's one of the, the really great um, innovative things that we have in Yellow Rose is that you don't normally see that story of undocumented Filipinos and you don't normally see the actual challenges of um, immigrants, Filipino immigrants, because a lot of times, you know, you you come here, you try to achieve the American dream, and even with social media, we try to pro project such a rosy picture of it. But you know, the the challenges with um, Rose and Priscilla in the film are not normally seen, uh, especially on the screen. So that's that's one of the things that I think is very critical that people. Um, especially in the Philippines would, um, could, could relate to. Thank you so much, Miss Leia, Miss Cecilia, and Mr. Jeremiah for sharing your thoughts. And I'm looking forward to watch this film. Thank you, have a good day, keep safe. Thank you. Thanks, Vaughn Bellinario of One News Philippines. Up next, we have Josephine Bonsol to ask a question. Hi, Mommy Jo. Hello, Ayi. Hello. Hello, Miss hello, Leia. Hello. hello. I How love you, you Leia. <laughs> I, love, I love you, Leia, and I love Yellow Rose. Maybe my question first is my curiosity on what popped up. Um, Diane and you were turning 50 when, and if that is so, if it's January, happy birthday. <laughs> uh, oh, February pa. Diane, when is your birthday? Happy Diane. I already turned. I'm I'm a little bit older than you, Leah. I turned okay. fifty. Oh, you turned fifty. Yeah. Okay. My, so my question my goes. Yeah, my question is, uh, uh Miss Leia. Your turn, um, girl. How do you feel? Your uh, siguro I don't know. You can relate to Miss Ava, uh, about her journey trying to get to uh, the story of a style of a star is born. Yung journey ng pagiging Filipino trying out in the, um, Hollywood and you were successful. Uh oh, she's frozen. Yes, Mommy Jo, but I think she was asking about 
um, okay, the back. similarities between your journey and Eva's. Yes, Mommy Jo, can you please repeat the last part of your question because you froze for a little bit? I'm sorry. I Yeah, similarities of your journey to Eva and okay. uh, your, also your curiosity on Eva. Oh, my curiosity? Um, I think whatever curiosities I might have had were all satisfied when I saw her performances on stage and watching her work uh, on Yellow Rose with me and seeing the finished film and seeing how wonderful and fantastic and I don't think I have enough superlatives for her. Um, as far as what it was like working with her, it was wonderful. I'm, I'm just sad that it was brief. As far as her own journey going through Hollywood, um, I think she will have an easier go at it than I did. I think when I started in, when I started with everything, there wasn't really a whole lot of representation. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of stuff in Hollywood on TV or on film where there were people that looked like me being portrayed. So even working on Mulan felt like such a, you know, it felt like such a, I got to the top of the mountain moment because finally, you know, Asians were being represented and it was a Disney cartoon. Um, and I, I got to sing some really wonderful music and got to work with some really wonderful people. And it felt monumental seeing this animated, you know, strong female character on screen 40 feet high. And for me to see that and to see my face reflected on the screen like that is huge. It's a huge deal. Um, Eva is coming in now where there seems to be more representation now on television, um, on film, and in theater. It, I think it's, it's, it seems like the change is happening at such a glacial pace, but at least change is happening. And I'm hoping that with films like Yellow Rose and Crazy Rich Asians, which will serve to show just how diverse even with, it is within the Asian and Asian American community. Um, it'll show that there are so many stories that, are, that have still yet to be told. So I am hoping that Yellow Rose continues to be successful because that'll mean um, if it, if it's commercially successful, then more stories will get told. More of our stories get told. Um, and that'll only be a good thing for our screenwriters and directors and actors, because there are a lot of Filipino actors in the United States, a lot, a lot. Um, so hopefully, you know, there will be more representation. Um, even things like uh, the Gianni Versace story, where even though it didn't exactly portray Filipinos in the best light, mm -hmm. it was fantastic to see people like Darren Chris playing a Filipino, because he is, and seeing people like John Jambriones play his dad, who's a Filipino, because he is, and to see that story also. Um, so it's it's... Yeah, so it's 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 gonna. I'm I'm hoping for, I'm hoping for the best because it means more opportunity for everybody to 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 get their stories told and filmed. Hello, I last question, Miss Leia. Um, uh, siguro what what are you excited for? Considering you're an icon, whatever you do, everybody follows. And whatever you, you know, recommend, everybody follows. <laughs> ano na yung pinaka-excited ka about your passion in your career this year and what excites you that you've never done before, never discovered before? You want to share to us? Uh, well, we're still in the middle of this global pandemic. I'm just hoping... I would like to get back to work. I mean, I, I've, the last sh concerts that I did were in March in Dubai. Uh, the last time I was anywhere on a stage here in the Philippines was as a guest in Rachel Langos concert. Um, so it's been a long, ridiculously long time. Um, 
since I was actually working in the way that I like to work. Uh, my katagalan din um, since then. And, you know, so most of the stuff I've been doing over 2020 has been virtual via Zoom or pre-recorded to be shown later. Um, or I've been busy baking bread. I mean, that's kind of what I've been uh, kind of keeping myself occupied with. And so I'm hoping that I'm able to, you know, get back into creating mode, whether it's in a concert or whether it's doing another theater piece or something where I get to be in front of an audience again. So I'm, I'm hoping that we're able to finally get a hold, uh, you know, on this virus and gain control over it, that we can all get back to a somewhat normal existence. There are other countries that have been able to do it. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to also, but it takes a concerted effort on all of our parts. It's, it's hard. I know it's hard. It's, it's tough. It's tough. But Sana, I'd like to get back to work. I mean, I can wait. I'm very patient. Um, and I'll keep on baking bread until I get back to work. But yeah, I would like to get back to work. Thank you in advance. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mommy Joe.